Let's talk about talk space. Let's talk talk space. <laughs> what am I doing here? Reviewing things for you that you might be interested in. First, let's get the deets out of the way. Talkspace is an online therapy service. I have been using it for seven months now. This is not sponsored or affiliated in any way. The company does not even know I exist. Well, they do as a patient, but they don't know that I'm even making this video. And I like to mention that because I want you to know this is a genuine, uninfluenced review. I came to the decision within myself that I was ready and needing to get back into therapy earlier this year. Talkspace is covered by my insurance, so that's how it was first even put on my radar. And to give you a little background on my therapy, journey, I like to consider myself a novice. I believe in therapy. It has worked for me. If you know anything about my background, you know I have been through a lot of stuff. And I know I would not be where I am today living a pretty healthy, if I do say so myself, balanced, peaceful life, a good marriage, awesome daughter, and the most stable I've ever felt. If it wasn't for the years of therapy I've done. I did six to seven years of pretty extensive, consistent therapy in my 20s after my divorce. I'll never forget thinking during my divorce, yeah, I probably have some issues from this and I'd like to get remarried and have a family one day. Maybe I should go talk to someone and try to work on some of these things. And then as therapy has a tendency to do, boom, opens Pandora's box. It always cracks me up like that first initial session. I'm filling out the paperwork and I'm checking like almost every box of just things I'd been through, struggles, past or present. And then when I gave my therapist the first rundown of my childhood, she was like, oh, so you were abused. And I was like, what? No, what are you talking about? All parents yell at their kids, throw things at their kids, hit their kids. Anyways, from then on started the journey of unpacking all of that and growth and healing. And I'm really grateful and also glad that I was brave enough to take that first step to just start going. Fast forward to now, doing therapy for that long really set me up with tools, healthy coping mechanisms, and just a general more emotionally and mentally sound way of being. But then with getting married, becoming a mother, experiencing new challenges, stresses, living through a global pandemic, family dramas, etc. It had been on the back of my mind the last couple years probably. Hmm, maybe I should get back into therapy. It might be good to have a little checkup, tune up. And then beginning of this year, I just went through some things that were really triggering. Things that pressed on some of my past issues. I started to slip into some depression and it was definitely time to talk to someone. And let me just say, whether you're interested in therapy for the very first time or it's your second, third, however many times back, it can be overwhelming. And it definitely takes some readiness, even though there's that cliche saying you're never really fully ready for anything. So when I was ready again, because I was tired of not feeling 100, side note, the therapist who I went to in my 20s, who was an absolute rock star, is retired. So that's why I was starting over kind of from scratch. Also, I live in a completely different area now, so I wanted to find someone closer. My husband casually mentioned that talk space is something that's covered by insurance. So I looked into it and I was really open to the online therapy concept. I've kind of moved that direction in my life anyways, as I'm sure a lot of people have. If I can get it online, if there's an app, as much as I can do online, I'm there for it. So I just signed up one day. And as expected as these online things typically are, it was easy, intuitive, and forms that are fast, you know, you're hitting next, completing things quickly. And within a matter of minutes, I had picked a therapist that seemed like a good fit. After a questionnaire and I could select some things like gender preference, or specialties. It offered me three people with their photos and resumes. If I didn't see anyone I liked, I could hit next, they'd give me three more. Once you've picked someone, you're in a chat room. Almost immediately, the therapist sent an intro. It's probably an automated thing for all of them, but still unique to who they are and how they work. And that same day, I started chatting with my new therapist, giving her some background, letting her know what I was hoping to get out of this. Now, I believe the way Talkspace works, and I could be getting some of this wrong because it is just coming from 
user experience. You can do chat slash messaging, whatever you want to call it. And there's also video calls. And I believe you can pick and choose either both depending on what you're looking for, cost, your insurance. I use both features. And in the messaging, they also have the little microphone so you can send audio messages if that's easier. I utilize it on both my laptop and I have the app on my phone. And I really like having that access to it whenever I want. Like if I'm having a thought or realization and I don't want to forget it, I can literally just send it to my therapist. If I'm having a bad moment, I can also reach out. As someone who is a verbal and external processor, it has been great. But I did want to offer a different perspective that a friend has shared with me. Because it is so readily available, for some people it could feel like an ever-present thing. Like if you know you have a message waiting from your therapist or with like remote working, with there being no physical breakaway, you're not leaving your home, going somewhere else, having a therapy session that happens outside and is separate from your home. Some people might not like that, so that's something to consider. I personally love the convenience of it. I hate commuting. I actually find it kind of comforting knowing it's always there if I need it, but I can also switch it off and compartmentalize it. Is that the word? The other thing, I know these online therapy services have gotten a bad rep for good reasons. I know there's been some controversies with some of them, and I just want to say, like with everything, there's pros and cons. And with this being kind of a newer space, there are still kinks to work out. And I'm not trying to make any of this just seem casual, especially because it is not. Your mental health is so important and should be taken seriously. But for me personally, the benefits have far outweighed some initial negatives. Like the first therapist I worked with, which was for two months. I really liked her at first, but she quickly became too comfortable. And a few sessions in became really political, was sharing a lot of personal stuff. <laughs> and then she had her camera on. We had a video scheduled. She didn't realize I was there and she had an outburst. It made me feel really uncomfortable and I didn't feel comfortable addressing it. So I decided to just move on. And then I went through three or four more therapists. <laughs> the next one was also not a good fit, but kind of in the opposite way. She was very kind, soft-spoken, and almost timid in her approach, which I'm someone who responds well to a little more directness. She was also just more into some exercises that I'm just not totally comfortable with. There are things that are common in therapy and do work for other people. I'm just really more into talk therapy. And then I had to go through a few more after that, just figuring out more technical things like if our schedules worked, one of them didn't accept insurance from Arizona. And then finally, I have found the one, the one ring to rule them all. <laughs> Lord of the Rings reference anyone? And I've been working with this therapist for four months now. So the first three months, it was just finding the right one. And yes, while that is a con, I don't feel like it was that big of a deal because I had gone through something like that before when I initially started therapy in my 20s. By the time I went through insurance, called some providers, got an appointment set up, met with one a couple sessions, didn't really like how it was going, then had to go back, call some more. So regardless if you're doing it the in-person way or the online way, unfortunately sometimes there's some trial and error. Think of it like dating. It's so rare that you meet someone on the first date and instantly fall in love and you know they're the one. Usually you have to go on a few dates to feel it out, get to know them. Often you have to date around, date different people. So what's my overall, in a nutshell, opinion of Talkspace? It works for me. I like it. I think I even like it a little more than the traditional going in person. The convenience of having a video session in my own home, not having to take the extra time to leave and commute, wait in a waiting room. I also like the easy access of being able to chat with my therapist outside of our scheduled sessions. Yeah, I'm a fan. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will get back to you. And until next time, bye.